Amen. Father God, we come into your house this morning. Lord, we come with hearts of thanksgiving. For God, you have been marvelous to us. How wonderful, how marvelous are your works. <laughs> and for that, Father, we just say thank you. God, we may have had some down moments, but uh, we know that your spirit is able to revive us. So God, we say for all those here in this sanctuary and those who are watching and listening by other means, Father, that you would just touch their hearts and uh, revive us, Lord, once again. God, we thank you that we can call on you as Father. For you are gracious. <laughs> you are merciful. You are faithful. And for that, we say thank you. God, you are worthy of all our praise on this morning. Uh, so we come in lifting up the praise and calling on the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, so we thank you. We say hallelujah and we glorify your name. Father, we ask that the presence of the Holy Spirit would be with us in this service. Holy Spirit, we hold nothing back, uh, for you are welcome, uh, welcome in this place. Uh, so let it rain, Lord, on each and every one of us, whether it's through song, Lord, through your word and through your preach word. God, uh, just have your way uh, in this service today. Father, we thank you for our pastor and our first lady, and we ask your blessings upon them and uh, God, we know that there is a word from on high, uh, so prepare our hearts right now, Lord, uh, that we will glorify you, starting right now in this service. Prepare our hearts and our ears for your word, uh, so that we will not only be listeners, Lord, but doers also of your word. Uh, we thank you, Lord. We love you. Uh, we magnify your holy name. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Those who are able, if you would stand for the reading of the word. Today's scripture comes from the gospel of John. The 11th chapter, verses 38 through 44. Again, we will be reading John 11, starting at verse 38. And I am reading from the King James Version. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take you away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with gray clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Amen. The word of God for the people of God from all that dwells,
And he said unto him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 Amen, everyone. It's again, it's a wonderful day to be alive and to be in your presence. Hallelujah. Isn't that a joy? Again, the Lord has shown his favor upon us and we give him praise for it. Let me remind all of the Quinites and others that we will be resuming our Wednesday Bible study on spiritual warfare and uh, there will be dialing information emailed to you and the pastor uh, will be teaching uh, one group session, just one group, won't be multiple groups this time, just one group session. The Board of Stewards would like to remind you of Pastor Appreciation, which is next Sunday, October the 18th. Expressions may be given in the following ways, online giving or in person or by mail. We also want to encourage each and every one of you to vote, to vote, and to vote as we come to the crossroads of our future in America and the future, of course, for the destiny of our lives and the rising generations. It is critically important that we vote. You have heard about all of the various uh, positions that the uh, politicians have made, especially in the debates. And so you should have some idea as to which direction you would like for this country to go in. Uh, but they would never know your decision unless you vote. And so we are encouraging everyone to vote and to vote, but to vote early. Because there are those who are trying to oppress the vote, who do not want it to be easy for you to vote. Uh, so go ahead and vote now. The other reason why you should vote now is because on November the 3rd, you just don't know how you're going to feel, what kind of day it's going to be, and whether you're able to get out. So that's why you should go ahead and vote early. And we know you're going to do the responsible thing of voting. God bless you. Now it is that wonderful time. I mean that extreme time. Don't you know in the springtime they plant in the fall time, they reap the harvest. And so it is our time to plant and to reap. So will you now get your seed and your blessing, partner with us, and to sow seeds into the kingdom of God financially here at Quinn Chapel. And you can give, you can see it if you're live streaming. You can see it uh, on the scroll where they're giving you opportunities to give. You can do it by our website or you can do it by text by giving. Or you can just mail it in. We will accept it. But be assured that you are sowing great seeds into the kingdom of God. So let us give. It is time to give. Glory to God. It's time now for, for intercessory prayer. And I know some of you have been, been trusting and you've been believing and, and seeking God. And some of you have had a manifestation for the things that you've been praying for. But some of us are still waiting for a manifestation of those things that we believe we already have received. And one of the things that God placed on my heart was sometimes there are barriers or challenges that we face when we're waiting for that manifestation. You know, sometimes there are things that are external, but what God really is focusing me on this morning is there are also things that are internal. Sometimes we've got things in our hearts that block the flow of God's blessings. One of the things that can block that is when we aren't loving everybody. 
I know it's pretty tough when you look at the news and see what's going on, see all the hate and the spewing and the lies and all that other stuff going on. But what God wants you to do is keep your heart pure and keep your eyes focused on him. You know, one of the scriptures that we looked at this morning was God, Jesus told us that we should love our enemies. We should love our enemies, do good to those that hate us, bless those that curse us, and pray for those that hurt us. And that's, a, that's pretty tough. But you know, the good news is he gave you his Holy Spirit so that you could love like he loves. And some of these things we're dealing with, the only way we're going to get out of them, yes, we need to put feet to our faith and vote, vote. But the only way we're going to get out is by us letting the love of Jesus flow through us. God told us, don't let evil overcome you, but overcome evil with good. And the way we do that is by loving. So really, we're going to, we're going to pray for, for our needs. We're going to pray for those things. But one of the things God's placed on my heart is, is that we pray for heart surgery for ourselves. That whatever unforgiveness we've got, whatever stony places we have in our hearts, whatever blocked vessels we have spiritually in our hearts, that we'll allow the Holy Spirit to open that up so that the glory of God, the anointing of God can flow through us and make a change in this nation. So whatever you're dealing with, I want you to really just start you know, take those things and bring them to the altar in prayer, but then get your eyes set on Jesus. For you know, when God said, when Jesus said, love your enemies, he didn't ask us to do anything that he didn't give us the ability to do. He also didn't ask us to do anything that he hadn't already done. Because the Bible says, while we were yet enemies, Jesus died for us. When we were enemies with God, Jesus hung on the cross for us. And now he's given us the ability to love like him. So would you bow your hearts before the Lord, please? Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this day, Lord. Lord God, we, we don't take it for granted, Lord. For Father, we know that there are alarm clocks all over the world, Lord God, that somebody set last night, Lord God. And it's still ringing this morning, Father, with nobody to turn it off, Lord. So Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness, Lord God. And Father God, as we come, Lord God, you know exactly what's going on in this nation, Lord God. You know what's going on throughout the world, Father. And Lord God, we take great, great comfort, Lord God, in the fact that you're not surprised by it, Lord God. You're not shocked by it, Lord God. And you already have a plan, Lord God, for the resolution, Father. And Father God, we just want to be part of your plan, Lord. Father God, therefore, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that, Lord God, you help us, Lord God, to love our enemies, Lord. Father God, we ask, Lord God, that you will help us, Father God, to do good to those that hate us, Father God, to bless those that curse us, Lord, and to pray for those, Lord God, who hurt us, Lord. Right now, Father God, I ask, Lord God, that you do heart surgery on our hearts, Lord God, that you'll search our hearts, Lord God, and know our thoughts. And Lord God, and when you find anything that stands in the way, Lord God, of us loving, Lord God, that you'll remove it in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, as, as we come together, Father God, your people, Lord God, are believing you, Lord God, for different things, Lord God. Some are believing for healing, Lord. Some are believing for financial blessings, Lord God. Lord God, because we live in a land, Lord God, of prosperity, Lord, but the food lines are getting longer and longer, Father. Some, Lord God, are, are, are asking, Father God, for shelter, Lord God, for foreclosure rates are going up, Father God. Some are asking, Lord God, for renewed relationships, Father, because the pressure and the stress that's going on right now, Lord God, has most of us at a boiling point, Lord God, and we're saying things that we don't mean, and we're meaning things that we don't say, Father. Therefore, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I ask, Lord God, that you start on the inside of us with our hearts, Lord God. And Lord God, do a work on our hearts, Lord God, that will flow to the outside, Father. That, Lord God, instead of cursing, we will bless, Lord. Instead of hurting, we will help, Father. Instead of, Lord God, doubting, we will pray, Father. 
But as we do these things, Lord God, we look to you, Father. And we look unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, Father God. Lord God, I ask right now, Lord God, that every need of every man, woman, boy, and girl be met this day in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. We believe, Lord God, that the answer is already on the way, Father. Lord God, we believe that the answer, Lord God, is already on the way, Father. And we believe that we receive, Father God, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, as we come, Lord God, we lift up our pastor, Lord, and Sister Jennifer. We speak life and blessings over them, Lord God. Protection and health over them, Father God, and their families, Lord. Just as we speak blessings, Lord God, over every family, Father God. Health and protection, Lord. And Father, as we come this morning, Lord, we need to hear a resurrecting word from you, Father God. We need a word, Lord God, that's going to encourage our hearts, Lord God. We need a word, Lord God, that's going to comfort us, Lord God. We need a word, Father God, that's going to challenge us, Lord, to become what you've called us to be. Now, Father God, as you're working on our hearts, Lord God, make our hearts good soil, that we'll receive good seed and bring forth a mighty harvest, Lord God. And that harvest will have fruits, Lord, that will not only benefit us, Lord God, but all those that are around us, Father. We thank you, Father God, that your love, Lord God, has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And you've given us our, your Holy Spirit that we could love like you, Father. Lord God, we ask that you'll give us radical love, Father. That we'll love the unlovable, Father. For that's what you've done for us. Now, Father, we thank you, Lord God that you, Lord God, have already met our, bless our needs, Father God. And Lord God, the windows of heaven are open right now, pouring our blessings, Father. We receive those in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the middle of the night 
worship ought to encourage you and that selection was a selection of encouragement don't give up don't give up I know that he cares I know you're contemplating you feel that all roads are closed on you but don't you give up I know that he cares yes he does the Israelites could have given up when they were at the Red Sea because there was no exit but the Lord came through, didn't he? He parted the water. So don't you give up. There's always a way. The Lord is never, never, never out of other options for us. 
So don't you ever give up. Amen. Thank you, Phyllis. This message today, stimulated by what I was watching the news and local news in the city of Cincinnati. And I saw a series of reporting of several of our young black men being brought before the judge for excruciating crimes. And some were there because of uh, drugs. And, but there were so many coming through that it affected my heart about the other side of the coin and how our young black brothers are lost into a different world and going in a different direction. I certainly want to give applause and thanks and salute to all of the young black brothers who, and girls who, young ladies, who are doing well and to acknowledge the positive things that they are doing. And there are so many of them who do not get recognized. And because there is some propensity for the media to always look at the negative of life and to try to highlight it. So I was moved by what I saw, gripped in my heart, and to the point that it affected me emotionally. So today's message comes from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 43 and 44. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice. Lazarus, come out. The dead man, the dead man, the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. I started to go down the journey of taking off grave clothes. But the spirit of the Lord directed me to preach about saving Lazarus. In the context of our text, Lazarus, who was a dear friend of Jesus, was now dead. Jesus, who dearly loved him, has now raised him from the dead. By raising him from the dead, Jesus gives Lazarus new life and a new beginning. Lazarus was set free from the grave clothes that had him bound. Jesus gave Lazarus, in other words, another chance to live again on this earth. What a wonderful change to be able to go from death to life. To go from grave clothes to freedom. Lazarus who was dead to society. Dead to life. Dead to friends and neighbors. Dead to society. 
is now experiencing a wonderful change in his life. No, no one, no one, absolutely no one expected to see Lazarus return from the dead. No one expected to see Lazarus to come back from the grave. No one expected to see Lazarus reliving again. The, the verdict was already in that Lazarus is dead sleeping in his grave. There is no anticipation, no hope of ever seeing Lazarus return back to them fresh and alive. Now, let's suppose that Lazarus was a scoundrel, scoundrel, unscrupulous, mean, evil, hard to get along with, unmerciful, cutthroat, and downright devilish. With such an unwelcoming personality, would the people really want Lazarus alive again? Would Lazarus be worth saving to come back from the grave? Would the people be excited if Lazarus was mean and evil man who terrorized the neighborhood to see him brought back to life again? Probably not. Certainly not. They probably said, what a blessing. Good riddance. However, now let me allow me to make a shift for a moment. There is a societal question that is resonating throughout the neighborhoods of our country by children, women, and churches. And the question is, where are the men folks? But a more pointed and personal question is, what is happening to our young boys who are eliminating themselves from the scenes of life like leaves falling from trees? What is happening to our young brothers who are to be our next governors, presidents, pastors, lawyers, doctors, bus drivers, teachers, mechanics, engineers, and church leaders? It appears that these brothers are trapped behind the macho myth and the empty symbols of worldly success. It appears that they are trapped behind drugs, alcohol, gang banging, degrading lifestyle, quick thrills, and king of the hills attitudes unfortunate many of them portray an attitude of what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine I'm willing to take what's yours at any cost even if it means shooting you down like a dog in the street even if it means that I have to end up going to prison furthermore here's what's so perplexing What's so perplexing is that some of these brothers come from homes who taught and practiced Christian values. Somewhere in their tender years, they switched Christian values for street values and made the streets <laughs> their new sanctuary and crack cocaine and meth their new God. Consequently, their activities in our neighborhood has produced more mourning and wailing, emergency rooms and funerals, fear and trembling than any time in our history. The question is that we as church, as a neighborhood, must answer is this. Is Lazarus worth saving? Should we leave him out there? To destroy himself and to commit chaos in our communities. Should we just leave him to himself to be producers of havoc in many of our neighborhoods? Should we just leave him just out there to cause more unnecessary pain to loving and caring families? Should we just leave him out there to destroy others and himself? So in short... Is he worth it? Is he worth saving? All the misery he's bringing to our neighborhoods, all the fear he's bringing to our streets, all the anger he's bringing to our city, should we turn our backs on him since he has turned his back against us? 
Should we treat him like a dog since he's behaving like a dog? Here's Lazarus. We're saving from his addictive and compulsive behavior. Is he worth saving from his destructive and out of control lifestyle? Satan's desire is for us to leave him alone. Satan's desire is for us to keep him trapped behind the grave clothes of destruction. Satan is afraid that if we are successful in getting him unwrapped from his grave clothes, he will get loose and become a mighty warrior against him and his strongholds. It's no secret that many good young men are trapped behind the grave clothes because they have not resolved bad issues that traumatized them early in life. They have buried their pain deep inside and consider it as a weakness. Therefore, we watch them drink too much, snort too much, get angry too quickly, withdraw in silent bitterness, and we are quick to scold them for the symptoms of their secret pain, where we need to heal the cause of their pain. Let's face it. Some of our young brothers are tied up and entangled in some pretty stinky stuff. However, it is my contention that we must not give up on them. We must save our Lazarus. I, I know he's gotten on your last nerve. I know that he hasn't shown much to try to save him. I know that he has worn out your patience. I know that he's, he almost made you lose your mind. I know that he's turned that last black strain of, of hair to gray. I know he has caused you more sleepless night than you care to talk about. I know that he disappointed you so many times that you are hard pressed to trust him again. As awful as things are with Lazarus. As grievous as things are with Lazarus. I contend that he's still worth saving. I may not receive a whole lot of amens on this one. But can we really be honest and talk about this thing? As grave as things are with Lazarus, I contend that he's still worth saving. I hear you mumbling out there. How can you save Lazarus when he doesn't want to be saved? As reluctant as we may be to continue to see, to save Lazarus, as just a fireball that we may feel to leave him alone. But the word of God strongly informs us that yes, this no good Lazarus is still worth saving. Let me show you why he's worth saving. Let me show you why that this honorary, no good in our mind, Lazarus is worth saving. First of all, Lazarus is worth saving because in the kingdom of God, not our kingdoms, but in the kingdom of God, he is still of value. <laughs> now this point may sound a little startling to you, that someone like Lazarus is still valuable to God. All the wrong that he's committed, all the hurt he, and fear he has perpetuated, and yet God still sees him as valuable in his kingdom. God further states in his word that his ways are not like our ways. And his thoughts are not like our thoughts. In other words, our opinion about a person, as valid as it may be, does not persuade God how he views us. The great news for all of us is, that God who knows everything about us, all of our shortcomings, all of our faults, all of our misgivings. But it doesn't stop God from loving us and blessing us and using us for his kingdom. Ultimately, when God sees us, it's no surprise. He, he knows that there is a lot of wrong with us. <laughs> but he also sees that there is a lot of right in us. He does not always approve our behavior, yet he still loves us and values us unconditionally. What we must understand is, is that our value in God's eyes 
never changes. Some of us have the idea that when we do something wrong or get off course, God gets his big eraser out and erase our name off his list forever. Here come the good shouting part. Get ready. If you never praise all day, you can praise on this one. God is a forgiving God. <laughs> he is a God of second chances. And no matter how many times we fail him or how many mistakes we make, or our value in God's eyes remain exactly the same. Therefore, Lazarus still has the potential to become a productive and valuable individual in life. When Jesus died on the cross, he was sending us a message that all Lazarus in the world are worth dying for. The crucifixion of Christ is not based upon what we deserve, but what we don't deserve. Yet Christ is willing to give us new life because we are still valuable to him. And because Lazarus is valuable to God, then we must be worth saving. Can I give you a little example here? Let's say that you, on your way to Kroger's, to buy a few items. And, and you get out the car, and then as you walk towards the building, on the ground is a, is a dirty, run over by cars, $50 bill in the parking lot. How many of you going to walk by and say, I'm not going to pick it up because it's filthy and dirty and messy? But most of you are going to pick up that dirty and, and run over $50 bill. Why? Because you don't see the dirt of it. You see the value in it. And because of the value in it, that's why you pick it up. And that's why God picks us up. Because he see the dirt on us. He see the filth on us. But he also see the value in us. And he keeps on forgiving us and giving us second chances because of the value he sees inside of us so Lazarus I contend is worth saving because of his value secondly Lazarus is still worth saving because here's another shouting moment mistakes are not final with God one of the wonderful things about God our Heavenly Father is that he doesn't keep a checklist of our sins and shortcomings. Because his love for us outranks our imperfect behavior. Now, why is this so important for us in the Lazarus of the world? To know that God doesn't keep a checklist of our sins and our shortcomings. We are all prone to make mistakes in life. Even the most seasoned believers experience failures. We are subject to make wrong choices, go in wrong direction, and choose wrong friends. In the midst of making mistakes in life, it just appears that some have turned it into a lifestyle. However, we cannot afford to let Lazarus, who turned his mistakes into a lifestyle, to be wiped out just because we disagree with how he thinks, where he hangs out, and the people he chooses to associate with. We should not condone his behavior. Neither can we leave him to remain in his grave clothes. Yet with all of his faults and mistakes, He's still a person of value in the kingdom of God. Therefore, although it's hard sometimes to do based upon God's word, we cannot abandon Lazarus because of his mistakes and wrong choices he's making. You see, if mistakes are the reasons for not reaching out to the lost captives in this world, then none of us will qualify to be saved today. Because the biblical record states, all have fallen short of the glory of God. That's you and me. The glory of God did not abandon us because of our mistakes, shortcomings, and foolishness. And nor did God allow mistakes to be terminal with him. 
He says to us, even in our depraved and the greatest state, come, let us reason together. Although your sin be as scarlet, I will wash them white as snow. As a matter of fact, look how God dealt with others in the Bible who made horrendous mistakes in life. Adam and Eve in the garden made the mistake of eating the forbidden fruit, yet God allowed them to live. Abraham made a mistake when he accepted Hagar as a substitute to produce the promised lineage, yet he became the father of faith. Moses made a mistake when he killed an Egyptian and yet became the only prophet who knew God face to face. David made a mistake when he had Uriah killed in order to marry his wife Bathsheba, yet he became a man after God's own heart. Peter made a mistake when he denied knowing Christ three times, and yet he became the leader of the first church. Paul made a mistake when he persecuted the early church, yet he became the great missionary for the kingdom of God. And yes, the Lazarus among us are making some crucial, painful mistakes. But the good news is that mistakes are not final with God. Think about it. How many mistakes have, has God had to forgive us of? What, what's on our seeing checklist that we are thankful that God's grace overruled? Come on, talk to me here. What's on your mistake list that God was willing to forgive? Therefore, as grievous enemies may be, we must do all we can to save Lazarus. God says the Lazarus of the world, return. And I will heal your backsliding. I will restore you back to your rightful position. I will reclaim you as my own. I will renew your position with me. I will rebuild a better future for you. I will make you into the better person. I will revive what the devil has destroyed in you. And because I am the resurrection in the light, that everything that looks dead is not dead. There is still hope for you, Lazarus, because mistakes are not final with God and hallelujah somebody in here you ought to be shouting right now that God did not use your mistakes against you but he forgave you of your sin and wiped it clean hallelujah that's why Lazarus is still worth saving and then lastly <laughs> Why is Lazarus worth saving, Pastor? Here it is. Catch this one. Because some of us were once Lazarus. Make no mistake about it. There was a little Lazarus in all of us. We all have tasted a lifestyle that was heading toward a dead end. Come on, come on. We all had at least one moment when we were heading toward a bad ending. It was only by the grace of God and a few loving good people praying for us and not giving up on us that helped us to redirect our steps. <laughs> If it had not been now for the love of God and others who made an investment in our lives, some of us will be still wearing our grave clothes. <laughs> I, I, I know that you have been saved, <laughs> baptized, and set free, but, but you were not always saved. Therefore, if we can look at you now and see how you were transformed, if we can look at you now and see how you made a complete makeover. If we can look at you and see what you now have become in Christ. It reaffirms the fact that yes, Lazarus is worth saving. If, if the truth be told, some of us, some of us were some bad, were some bad apples out there. Some, some of us didn't have it all together. We were on our way to hell. My God. And, and, and so therefore, by the grace of God, he snatched us back into our right thinking, into our right direction, into our right mind. And not, not only, not only, not only is Lazarus worth saving, there is still hope that he can be saved. 
Because when I just look at myself, I can't talk about you. I can't talk about you because I don't know your story. But I believe that your story may be similar to my story because I was not always saved. But I did do some dirty stuff out there. And it was only by the grace of God that he saved me and brought me back to where I should be. Ah, my God, Reverend. But when I look at all the former Lazarus and I see you sitting out there with the overcomer crowd and singing what a wonderful change has come into my life ah, since Jesus came into my heart. It reassures the fact that what was possible for us is still possible for the Lazarus among us. My brothers and sisters, if the Lord can change us from who we used to be to how we are now, if the Lord can change us from what we used to do to what we are doing now, if the Lord can change us from how we used to live to how we are living now. If the Lord can change us uh, from being at our worst and living at our best, then I can testify today that Lazarus is still worth saving because there's hope for him and because there's hope for us that should be hope for him. I want to ask a question out there and I want you to be honest with me. Are there any former Lazarus out there? I mean those of you who are looking and on Facebook, are there any Lazarus out there? If there are then certainly you can say today if it had not been for the Lord we wouldn't know where we'll be right now uh, because of how the Lord changed our life we can testify what you're looking at now you are looking at a miracle if you want to know what a miracle looked like just look at us because what the Lord had to do for us and why the Lord had to clean us up and how the Lord had to dress us up and how the Lord had to reframe our mind. How the Lord had to take us out of darkness and to his marvelous light. I want you to know that when you see us, you're looking at a miracle. And I'm telling you, we may not say it because we've been on the other side too long and we forgot about what took the Lord to bless us, to bring us over. But I tell you, there is a past in our life that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we'll be right now. But I can tell you that some of us were seeking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore, deeply, deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the captain of the sea, he heard a despairing cry from the waters of sin, from the waters of deprivation, from the waters of corruption, from the waters of wrongdoing, from the water of irrepute, from the waters of transgression, from the waters of misbehaving from the waters of stubbornness from the waters of failure he lifted us he lifted us he lifted us and because we have been lifted up Lazarus can be lifted up aren't you glad that God lifted you out of your sin <laughs> when nothing else with him the Lord lifted us Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same love that saved us is the same love that can save Lazarus. Is he worth saving? Is Lazarus worth saving? I like that saying that the old folks used to say, oh, only by the grace of God there go me. Only by the grace of God, there go me. <laughs> yes. Thank God to be a forgiving God. Thank God for his willingness to change and transform our lives. Thank God. Uh, some of our friends didn't make it. Some of our family members didn't make it. Some of our neighbors didn't make it. And we were at the same place, doing the same thing. Only by the grace of God, there go I. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you brothers out there. And I want to talk to you sisters out there. God made you to worship him. And to serve him. 
but it gave you what we call in philosophy, volition, which means you have the freedom to choose which road you're going to travel. There's a road that leads to a dead end. There's no life there. There's a road that leads to a place of joy and everlasting life. You have the choice to make. If you think that nobody like, likes you, or loves you, care about you, no one or dad that can encourage you. You've had some issues because of your early life, because of how things went. Some people may have walked out on you. You may have been damaged as a child. But I just want to want you to know something. There's somebody who loves you. His name is Jesus. He died for you on a cross so you may experience a transformation in your life and be empowered with his spirit and to bring you out of your darkness so that you can live in his marvelous light. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing like the light of Jesus. Many of us have been there in darkness. But what a transformation when we saw and found and discovered his light. Bow down in your heart. Father, forgive me. I need your love. I need your forgiveness. I repent of my ways. I don't like what I'm doing. But sometimes I feel like there's no other choice. But there is. Choose Jesus today. And if you do that, call us. 513-825-4900. First and foremost, we're going to pray for you. Pray with you. And then we're going to coach you. How to remain free from the snatches and stronghold of the devil. Please do it. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say, Amen. Amen again. Amen. 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 This concludes our worship experience today. We thank God for, for the outpouring of his presence and how he's anointed us in music with Phyllis Shaw and how he's anointed us with instrument with our musicians and music director and, and the prayer and the scripture. And you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there's nothing so special than to be around special people like you. And so you have made my day special because I'm among special people. Nothing in this life that you go for this week, don't let anything speak to you that say you cannot do it. Because something good is going to happen to you. But the Lord your God it's going to bless you this week. Live in the light. Live in the blessing. Live in the hope. Live in it all. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. God bless you. And tell God renew us to come back again. Hallelujah. This service is now completed with the blessings of God. You may be released and be careful. <laughs>